Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. We're gonna talk about my dollar whippet theory, the Economic Ninja's dollar whippet theory. Now, guys, I'm not a financial professional. Do not mistake me for one. I'm just a dude with a brohawk and a dream. But we're gonna talk about this. This is where I think we see the markets going and uh, yeah, see if it works with you guys. All right, so the dollar whippet theory is essentially broken into three spots, three places. We have inflation, which we're obviously seeing right now uh, worldwide. Inflation, which will turn into a deflation. Then we're going to turn into hyperinflation. I'm going to explain each one right now, all right? So with inflation, first off, we had a couple different um, uh, reasons why we saw inflation the last year. We had uh, shortages of goods, which caused uh, prices to run up. Uh, give an example, auto chips, right? Uh, since those were shortages of auto chips, um, or let's say, uh, yeah, the cars that weren't able to be made, uh, people dove into used cars or, you know, the cost of new cars uh, went screaming up higher. Then you saw demand in things like lumber, where uh, for a short period of time, you saw shelves completely bare because when the economy was shut down about a year and a half ago, uh, uh, people ran out to go, you know, if they're, you know, stuck at home, they might as well fix up their house a little bit. So they ran to Home Depot and Lowe's and they drained them of all their stuff, right? Well, that led to a panic in the futures market. And you guys know the story there. You know, literally a hyperinflation, a three, four, five hundred percent, in some cases in lumber prices. So cost of goods were rising from those two things. Now, uh, the problem with that is, is when you start to see sustained levels of inflation, then what happens is people after time start spending less money and it's because the wages usually do not stay up with inflation actually i've never even seen wages stay up with inflation in the short term it always takes a long-term bit of pain for uh, companies to start paying more uh, to start trying to get better help um, or government uh, intervenes and starts raising minimum wage things like that right so wages don't in the short term they never stay up with inflation especially these short bursts like this these heavy bursts of inflation like we've seen in the last year year and a half so when people stop spending money uh, on on like the extra things in life what happens is the money velocity slows right well when the money velocity slows it affects all sectors in the economy and uh, what i like to use as an example is the butcher having less money to spend at the barber shop, right? Uh, because the butcher isn't selling as many fine cuts of beef anymore because people don't have money for the fine cuts of beef. They just need to, you know, get their food, pay their electricity, things like that. So now he has uh, less money to go spend at the barber. So he's, you know, pushing those, uh, those haircuts out just a little bit too long, not trying to stay, you know, high and tight. So now as the money velocity slows, we start to move into this uh, deflationary period, right? Well, there's one uh, part of deflation, which is money slows. But then the other part of it is when banks decide, you know what, we don't feel like this is a good time to start lending a ton of money. So what they start doing is they start um, uh, tightening their lending standards. They tighten those lending standards in multiple different ways. They uh, make uh, loans harder to get. They like increase the, uh, 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 you know, the credit score worthiness, things, or, you know, things like that to be able to make it to where only really good qualified uh, candidates can, can borrow their money. So now you have, in deflation, you have a, a scenario where you've got people spending less money plus banks giving out less money, which means there's a ton less money in the market that's going in to drive up the inflation, right? So obviously what we see is prices start to retreat, okay? Now this is prices across the board. Um, it can even affect food, but usually it affects your higher end foods, things like that. Um, your, your consumer staples, you know, foods that everybody eats across the board um, are gonna stay pretty uh, stable in these times. Uh, however, you're gonna see slowing in food uh, uh, purchasing like in restaurant purchases and stuff like this. Uh, the restaurant industry did get hit hard in the re Great Recession because whereas uh, a few years before the Great Recession started, people had a lot of uh, money in their pockets. They had that wealth effect because the stock market was uh, at all time highs and they were out spending money on restaurants. So you saw restaurants ordering food and stuff like that at a certain clip 
But when the recession uh, started, people were going out to eat less because they were too busy negotiating their, their mortgages, their bad mortgages with the banks. Uh, restaurants stopped uh, or, you know, ordering as much food. You saw restaurants closing, all kinds of stuff. So then that obviously leads to mass layoffs. Now, as a deflationary bubble bop pops, there's a lot less businesses now that have the ability to get easy money, cheap, easy money, which means a lot of them, because of the way they do their taxes, they don't have a ton of money in the bank. You see, you know, with uh, certain corporate structures and companies uh, are always running right at the edge. They've only got usually about four to six weeks of cash flow to maintain their operations. And if there's a hiccup in that, that's very bad. So if they don't have the ability to go and get quick loans, then they close their doors. So that means mass layoffs. And usually it comes in the form of layoffs before they close their doors because they're just trying to stay open and they're trying to do anything they can to maintain their business. Now this leads us to the end of the deflationary uh, sp uh, spiral, and that's the need for more money. When you need more money because you can't continue your operations because you didn't have enough money in the bank, then the need for money printing starts, and that's where the government steps in. Now this usually, in my opinion, happens when we see jolts to the market. Like the government and the Federal Reserve do not wanna step in unless there are people crying out for it. They don't wanna be blamed for anything that could go wrong in the future based off of their decision, they wanna be able to point it back, back at you and go, hey, you're the one that asked for this, okay? Just remember, you guys asked for this. So then they start to fire up the printing press. Now this is the beginning of a hyperinflationary scenario. And this is what I believe we're gonna see in this country and around the world, okay? As the printing presses fire up, and I know people are gonna probably uh, laugh because they say, what, you don't think the printing presses are fired up now? I don't think we've seen anything yet, even as bad as it is now. They start firing at that printing press, it's gonna be different because when you have a big deflationary bubble pop like what we had in, uh, during the Great Depression and then we had one in the Great Recession, money starts to flow into all sectors of the economy. And it, when you know your currency is at the end of its uh, age, the end of its lifespan, that money printing will make it into everybody's hands, almost like a universal basic income style uh, printing. I do believe we're going to see that. I don't think it's going to hit every single person in the country. I think it's going to, but it's going to be a lot more than what we've seen in the last year and a half as far as stimulus goes. The problem with this, when that happens, now everything hyperinflates. If you put money into somebody's hand and it's free and it didn't cost them anything, they're going to spend it. By and large, they are not gonna go and buy uh, solid assets with it. You're not gonna see them going out and buying gold and silver, um, uh, you know, Bitcoin, uh, you know, food. They're, they're a lot of people, because they literally live paycheck to paycheck, and they live, <coughs> excuse me, um, just in one month sort of time frames. they're not thinking about next month. They're thinking, government's here to save me. I got the money, I'm gonna go spend it. And you're gonna see wild speculations. You'll probably, you'll see the stock market inflate. When uh, uh, Venezuela uh, had their hyperinflation, uh, their stock market went up just thousands of percent. But the thing is, is their thousands of percent weren't, weren't as high as the cost of food going up. So it gets completely distorted and you have a really hard time um, finding true price discovery in the markets. That's another thing too. It sort of leads to, it leads to total chaos in the short term. So, at the end of this, as everything hyperinflates, it happens every time a currency dies, and I use die, dying as a, a light term because uh, the currency name sticks around, it's just a totally different form, and you know, it's like a reset. Uh, you need a, a reset and a new currency. And I do believe that we're gonna see that. I believe it's gonna come in the form of the central bank digital currency. Um, it is not a blockchain, it's, it's digital currency. I believe it's gonna be put out in ways that will blow people's minds. Like here's X amount of dollars, you have 21 days to spend it. If you don't spend it, we take it back. And that is going to truly lead to a hyperinflation. 
I, I think that you're going to see, and, and the interesting thing is by that point, I also want you to know, understand is that everybody becomes a precious metals expert in, at, in those times. And they're going to become like a cryptocurrency expert because it's like in 2007 and I'm finishing here. You know, when I was real investing in real estate in the early 2000s, flipping homes, buying rentals, and you know, people are sort of ma making fun and having their fun with me. Um, by 2005, everybody was a real estate professional. Everybody seemed to have a, a rental. Everybody knew everything about, you know, investing. And it was funny because I'd looked at these guys and they would have like a portfolio of one house. And I go, well, you know, one rental. And I, I'm watching how they're doing it. And it's just pure speculation. It was pure madness. And, uh, and it's like that all the time through these different cycles of hyperinflation. Everybody becomes a professional at whatever's hyperinflating real quick because that's the talk of the town because all people are thinking about is money, money, money. I'm going to make money. I'm going to make money. And it just gets crazy. This is, you know, tulip mania, the emu mania. I mean, there's so many manias I've gone through um, in just the last hundred years. Uh, tulip mania was older than that. But, uh, you know, you see my point. It's, uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting to me. Uh, that's the dollar whippet theory. Inflation, deflation, ending with hyperinflation. You know, I hope I'm wrong, but I honestly don't think that I am. And if you guys are wondering what can you do to prepare for this, one thing is have some extra food. I, I can't stress that enough. Have some extra food because why would you want to pay those hyperinflated prices if you could just buy some food right now that you're already going to eat? And even if this never happens, well, guess what? You're still going to eat the food. So it's super easy. Um, another thing is, is look at inflation hedges. You know, uh, over time in history, gold and silver react very well. Now, gold and silver have probably went up the least amount that any other asset class has during this time of, of good solid inflation last year, year and a half, that's what makes me even more bullish about it. I'm a contrarian investor. I like to invest in things that nobody else is. Um, another thing that uh, a lot of people are getting into is Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin, there's only so many of them available. And so there's a lot of people that are gonna be uh, putting their money into that too. Uh, people say, will uh, uh, real estate inflate? It will only at the point where the government money steps in and starts giving everybody money and they start speculating in real estate. If we don't get to that point where they're giving you tons of money each month, like universal basic income, where you can go out and you know, buy up homes and speculate in homes, I don't see it going up more than the average person can bear to buy it or you know, afford it. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this. Thank you to everybody that's new subscribers. Uh, thank you for everyone that's hitting the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. The Economic Ninja is out.